Of course, there's a reason they're so expensive. By and large, the earnings from the cloud plays have been extraordinary during a very difficult period for the economy. Just when you think they've rallied all they can, they report a blowout quarter and the stock surges higher. Data dog, they have one of the best uh, beats of the year. Crowd strike, remember we just had them on their amazing Okta. I can't, this, it, 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 Tom McKinnon, I mean, I, I honestly say you can do no wrong. Uh, Mr. Shortry can't do any wrong, uh, wrong in Zscaler, though. And Zoom video, well, it's probably the story of the century. And you know, I think that Eric Yuan is a rock star. And even and I read all the articles about China and I believe in the man. I'm not telling you to do your banking on Zoom. I am telling you to do your boozy brunch on Zoom like I do every Sunday. Now, it's what it would be a mistake to ring the register on these stocks. Some yes, some no. The digitization story is too good to miss. We need to be more selective, though. So let's take a Try to figure out which ones have gotten a little too expensive. All right, first off, when you're evaluating these software as a service companies or SaaS stocks, there's a quick and dirty way to get a sense of what works and what doesn't. It's called the rule of 40. I've talked about it many times. I will talk about it more. The rule of 40. Basically, you add the company's revenue growth rate. All right, it's right here. You add the company's revenue growth rate to its earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization margin. Now, if the combination's over 40, you got a good one. If it's under 40, you got a riskier one. The idea here is that there are two ways to win with these cloud software plays. If they're losing money, they better have very rapid revenue growth. And if they got slower growth, well, they better be a lot more profitable. And that's what we're really measuring here. Of the 50 cloud names we're looking at, 17, 1, 7, pass the rule of 40 test based on this year's estimates. And they are Zoom Video. Livongo, Chegg, CrowdStrike, Viva Systems. That's uh, P- uh, that one, Peter Gaston. It's fantastic. Uh, Adobe, Datadog, ServiceNow, Atlassian, Simple Team, Salesforce.com, DocuSign, Fastly, Dynatrace, Zscaler, VMware, Dropbox, and Wix, which you've had on a couple times. That's just cool guys from Israel. Now, if you use next year's numbers, you would pick up another two that we like, Coupa and Alterix or Alteryx, depending upon whether you want to get it wrong. But lose Datadog, Fastly, and Zscaler, which is one of my faves. Of course, the problem here is the valuation. The Rule of 40 doesn't tell you anything about that. So what if we created a new metric? I can't believe I'm doing this on a Friday because I know a lot of you are tired, but I don't care. A new metric by taking the Rule of 40, the, the rule of 40 score and dividing it by the price to sales multiple. So let's say your revenue growth plus your EBITDA margin should be at least five times the size of your price to sales multiple. It's a a subjective standard, but I kind of like it. Who from the 17 names that passed the rule of 40 make the cutoff? Well, some old friends. VMware, Dropbox, Salesforce, Chegg, Adobe, and Livongo Health. Remember, Livongo Health is like that personal health coach for diabetes. Now, I think this is a decent list if you're worried about valuations. You don't want to chase the red hot style, uh, stay at home stocks. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.